Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Monga. Today, I have uh, Ray Zhang with me. We are going to talk about NSXT and vSphere with Kubernetes. We have seen a lot of challenge in the industry, and our customers are facing challenge about how do we leverage Kubernetes with vSphere and NSXT to maintain that uh, level of uh, agility and scalability with vSphere, and also network and security with NSXT. Raymond, why don't we start with a quick introduction? Thank you, uh, Victor. So, uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Raymond de Jong. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, VCDX uh, number 284. Uh, happy to share today uh, some of the edge design topologies we su support today and uh, hope you like it. So before we jump in and talk about the design topologies, Ray, why don't we just uh, introduce the challenge that we face. On this slide, I have a developer who is ready to develop and uh, he, he or she needs a, a place to do its development. So he's asking, I need a place to do some development work. And on our right side, I have an IT operator. She's asking how many virtual machines do you need? Because that is all she can provision and that is all she cares for. So she cannot translate the dev workplace into virtual machines. She needs to know how many virtual machines do you need? Now, the developer again, he asks, you know what? I need a Kubernetes cluster because that is what he understands. That is what he needs for his development work. But for an IT operator, once again, it needs to be translated into virtual machines. How many virtual machines do you need? Now, developer again is try trying to make that last effort. And he's saying, you know what? I'd like to start with the master node and three worker nodes. Once again, that's Kubernetes. And for an IT operator, she's asking the same question. How many virtual machines do you need? You know, after all of this, I think developer is going to get frustrated and he might ask, you know what, never mind, I'll do my own development in public cloud. And he's going to take his development to create some sort of instances in public cloud, and that's shadow IT. He needs place to develop. He needs to produce because that is what his job is. But on the other side, for an IT operator, she might say, you know what, when you know how many virtual machines you need, let us know. Now, as you can see, the biggest problem here is developer has its own terminologies that they need for development. IT operator only understand that, tell me how many virtual machines do you need because that's what they have been using with vSphere. Now, why don't we provide a solution as well? If a developer is asking, do you need kids? And an IT operator can translate that into leveraging VMware products such as VCF, SDDC, vSphere, NSX, vSAN. It might be a good transition. So as long as developer actually asks for kates, nodes, pods, Docker, YAML, he knows how he's going to consume. As long as IT operators provide that space for a developer, she can continue providing the support for a developer. With that, Ray, I'm going to hand it off to you to talk about edge cluster designs. Thank you, Victor. So with this session, we really want to share uh, five topologies we currently support today for anyone uh, either wanting to start with the uh, vSphere and Tenzu uh, on NSXT or uh, people, customers looking for scalability options to either scale out or scale up um, the required network topology for vSphere with Tenzu. So obviously when you use NSXT as the underlying networking solution, you have to have NSXT manager installed. Furthermore, you need to create at least two edge nodes and configure a tier zero on the on your edge cluster consisting of those two edge nodes. So this first design option is basically the first uh, uh, simple getting started design, right? You have your first supervisor cluster, uh, you create a, a bunch of namespaces and you use NSXT to uh, route and forward to traffic and to provide networking services like uh, load balancing, network address translation, and obviously uh, securing your workloads, uh, securing your namespaces and do the pot to pot security. So in this diagram, you could see the supervisor cluster with uh, with a, common, a couple of namespaces. And it's wor worth noting that uh, with the latest release, we have network separation or isolation on a namespace basis. And each namespace gets their own tier one. So besides the supervisor cluster system namespace, each namespace you create additionally for your customers, um, that creates a tier one and will automatically connect to the tier zero. With each topology I'm going to show today, you would see two edge nodes in the topology, but you can always scale out up to 10 edge nodes in a given edge cluster. And you can uh, scale out to up to 
200 namespaces in a supervisor cluster. Reason behind that is that each namespace gets their tier one, but also each namespace gets a small load balancer instance. We can support up to 20 active load balancing instances per, per uh, edge node. Therefore, with 10 edge nodes, we can support up to 200 load balancing instances. So the next topology you show, see here is that when you have multiple supervisor clusters and you're scaling out in terms of computer memory, you could leverage the same N60 edge cluster. So in this diagram, we're, we're sharing a common edge cluster in N60 to serve one or more, multi, one or more supervisor clusters. Uh, the downside of this is obviously at some point you could reach scalability limit limits if you have more than a certain number of namespaces in both supervisor clusters. If you look even further, um, you would also at some point need to consider scalability in terms of network throughput. So this design option gives you separation of uh, tier zero, which is uh, responsible of forwarding brackets to the physical network and receiving packets from the physical network, so north-south traffic, and a layer of an edge cluster, which is serving, uh, providing networking services for all your namespaces, which are the load balancing, network address translation, and firewalling services. So in that way, you separate pure routing forwarding resources from compute resources as network services, as I mentioned before. And, um, and uh, obviously the edge nodes themselves in the tier zero edge cluster, you can scale out as well to up to eight edge nodes in an active active configuration. So depending on the, the, the physical speed of the host you, you run uh, the edge nodes on, you will have more bandwidth available to you. The next option, option four in this, uh, this supported topology is more of a, I would say a, a, a more of a separation of environment where each supervisor cluster could represent an environment like test, dev, or production. And each supervisor cluster is tied to a given edge cluster, that dedicated edge cluster for their networking services. In this option, we we'll steer, we, we still share the same edge cluster for forwarding uh, north-south traffic, um, but each supervisor cluster has guaranteed, if you like, resources for that edge cluster, uh, for that supervisor cluster in that given edge cluster, which is tied to that supervisor cluster. So you are more assured that let's say workloads in test don't um, push aside perhaps uh, workloads in production on a given edge cluster. And the final supported topology is, uh, is one where we have a true multi-tenant kind of model um, or a true separation of both north-south traffic on an edge cluster towards the physical network and separation of the resources I mentioned in the previous option. So in this case, you would see one physical router drawn in the picture, but it can also be obviously separate physical routers to connect each supervisor cl cluster to. Might be that you're, you're, you have uh, strict requirements in connectivity. Um, you only want to consolidate north-south traffic for your test cluster or your tenant A cluster uh, on a specific uh, top of rack fabric, where else, whereas um, for edge cluster two, they are bound to a production environment. They may need to, need to connect to a different network fabric. So you get pure separation possibilities for north-south traffic. And again, for services, we have separation in terms of available resources for each supervisor cluster in an edge cluster. And that means that uh, each tenant have their own dedicated resources. And most likely you would place your, your edge nodes for a given supervisor cluster on top of the hosts, which run, the, super, which run uh, the namespaces as well. So to keep your traffic as local as possible to your, to your actual workloads. And by that, I mean the low balancing services you run in your tier ones on your edge cluster. It makes sense to keep them running as close to the workloads as you can to avoid any unnecessary hops in the network fabric. So right now, these five design options uh, are, are supported and, uh, and give you a, a quick start in, in, in designing for vSphere with Tenzu and give you abilities to scale out your environment or to scale up your environment where needed. Thank you, Raymond. And that's all we have for today. Once again, this is something to get you started and thinking about it, vSphere with uh, uh, Kubernetes and Tanzu, and also how you can leverage NSXT. 
with future sessions, we'll talk about, dig deep into what other things that you should consider when it comes to vSphere with Tanzu and NSXT with Tanzu. Once again, Ray, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks.